have a confession. I tried weed for the first time in my adult life, but it's not what you think. Now, I grew up smoking a lot of weed. I grew up even selling weed, but I've never tried it in my adult life. But something recently happened and I found myself at a local dispensary. And it's not what you think. I walk in, the place feels like an Apple store. I mean, it looks like an Apple store. I mean, it even smells like an Apple store. But you're not here to hear about my local dispensary experience. You're here to figure out how I, as a 37-year-old Christian husband and father, justified using cannabis. Bruce Lawn. I'm gonna show you exactly what happened, what I did. I always talk about the need to be transparent, to expose yourself before anybody has a chance to expose you. So I'm gonna get to the nitty gritty. If you watch till the very end of this video, I even have exactly what I consumed with me right now. And I'll answer the question on if my position has changed. I gotta ease into this with a bit of context so that it'll make sense for you. Before I was planning to uh, be a YouTuber and make music full time, plan A was to be a professional NBA player. And then I discovered that I was five foot eight in high school, Armenian, and got cut from my JV basketball team my sophomore year. So I decided oh, this probably isn't in the cards for me. I'm probably not going to be a professional athlete. However, I kept playing after high school. I feel like I even got better because after high school, I put on a couple of inches. And I remember around 2005, I caught this fast break. And at the time, I wasn't doing any strength training. I wasn't doing any preventative training. I was just playing basketball like four or five times a week, full court, super aggressive. And simple layup, somebody threw me the ball, caught, came down, pop. I screamed, I yelled people to come and to pray for me, got myself up and it was like, oh, probably, you know, and went to the doctors, asked all my Christian friends to pray for me, uh, found out a while later that after getting an MRI that I have blew out my ACL, my MCL, ruptured my meniscus, the whole bit, completely blew out my knee, 20, 20 21 at this time. Like a year or two later, finally got my ACL, MCL reconstructed. Everything was well. I was hooping back about a year later. Okay, fast forward. In 2019, it was coming off of a pull-up crazy, landed weird, boom. Couldn't walk, knee just locked up. Ran another MRI, found out that there was scar tissue from the first surgery and I had arthritis on my knee and the scar tissue is what caused my knee to lock up. Had another surgery right before the pandemic. Recovered rather quickly. Two, three weeks ago, I was playing basketball again. And as long as I keep my knee brace on and my compression pants on for the rest of the day, there isn't a ton of swelling. Well, apparently I think I like pull my knee sleeve down too soon or something, but I got home, my knee was super swollen. So I didn't play Friday, didn't play the following Wednesday, I usually play twice a week. And then played the following Friday, half court this time, super mellow older friend named Paul guarding me. He's like in his 60s, not aggressive. Played three games half-court basketball and just did a simple crossover move and then bang, oh, knee just totally locks up again. And I was in a lot of pain for quite a few days. Now, I'll tell you guys what the doctor just said. I literally just came from the doctors. And I'll tell you like what's gonna happen with my knee. I was like, man, I'm not fun to do opioids. I don't want to dabble, go down that path. You know, and I, I, I was taking ibuprofen um, for the swelling. Didn't want to take that. So I'm like, you know what? I need something for pain relief. And a friend of mine, uh, he's going through and has gone through cancer. And he, for pain relief, was taking these little gummies and these little edibles. And I asked him like, yo, what's up with these? How do these make you feel? I like, man, they feel great. I sleep well. So I'm going to go down to the dispensary. Like, let me see if I can find something for pain relief. And I'm gonna tell you guys exactly what I found. And I'm gonna tell you guys my experience with it right after this break. Hey, this video is brought to you today by our very own Bless God Shop. The name Bless God is inspired by Luke chapter two, verse 28, where Simeon encounters a baby Jesus in the temple and proceeds to quote, bless God. The apparel is intended as a daily reminder to live our life in a way that brings honor and blessing to God. Check out the link to the shop in the description or in the pinned comment below and pick up some of the most sustainable and high quality apparel out there. Hey, if you're watching this, make sure you smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Make sure you're subscribed with the bell notification on. So I really just wanted to get some good sleep because the knee would throb and it was swollen the whole bit. And so I went down to the dispensary and I got these full spectrum cannabis infused gummies 
uh, with CBD indigo. There's five milligrams of THC in each one of these. The, 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 the pack is still full. I'm going to get to why here in a second. These have all kinds of stuff for inflammation, for swelling, for the whole bit. And let me tell you, taking before I went to bed, it did the trick. Man, was I relaxed, sleeping well, incredible. And I did it for about a week, but there was a side effect I'm going to get to. Okay. First of all, slept good, slept like a baby. It was amazing. Okay. Second of all, I didn't have any dreams. What are you saying? Why is that? Why does that matter? Well, because even though I was sleeping well, I have this little whoop band. Okay. And the whoop tells you the quality of your sleep. And the whoop band kept kept showing I had very low recovery because it's monitoring everything. It tells you how much time you're spending in REM sleep. REM sleep is the sleep where you're dreaming. Okay. Even though I was having solid relief from the, the, the pain, I, I was falling asleep well, I wasn't getting many dreams. In the Whoop app, it, I read an article and they were saying, when you have bad recovery, you, you create a recovery debt and then you have to catch up on your recovery, on your sleep, specifically your REM sleep. That's when your body's in a dream state. That's when you're recovering the most, uh, your body's replenishing yourself. And so I didn't have dreams for like a week, okay? So what happened? Well, I stopped and you know what happened? There was this gnarly buildup of dreams that my first like three nights of not taking these, the dreams were just the most vivid and the most bizarre. And it was just like a overflow of the craziest, most vivid dreams. And, and it was borderline scary. I'll spare you the details. What I've read about alcohol and THC is that that it can suppress your REM sleep. Your REM sleep is your most important sleep. It's the sleep you dream in, but it's also the part where your body does the replenishing and your brain, all that kind of stuff. And so with that, the question is, has my position changed on cannabis? Do I think that you can use it in a way that's not sinful? I still stand by the fact that smoking is not ideal. I would never smoke it. Okay, I, I just I don't see the value of inhaling anything. Now, some Christian guys, they like to smoke cigars, you know, and sit around and drink beers. I'm not even on that. But can you consume an edible? Can you consume something in a way for a uh, 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 pain relief. Can you do these as a casual, I don't know, you know, kickback type of situation, uh, like, like a glass of wine? I, you could, but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. You, you consuming something like this is going to, to jack up your sleep patterns and is going to do something that isn't intended for your body to be done. Now, some of you guys, you guys got chronic pain, somebody's going through cancer, something like that. Totally understand, totally different situation. For me, I don't think I, I would continue doing this. I guess if I had another surgery on my knee, which I had in 2019, I would do something like this over Vicodin for pain relief and inflammation with ibuprofen. But to do this for pain relief, for me, is just, I mean, it got, it got me a couple nights of great sleep. It did the trick. But I don't think I would, I would consume this regularly. I don't think I would ever consume this recreationally. I don't think I would ever consume this uh, for creativity. I, I just, I don't see a ton of positive ROI, but unlike my first video, I'm speaking from a place of having experienced it, st still against, you know, casually, recreationally smoking it, but this, uh, I, I've technically got a medicinal card to consume it in this way. There is a possible way that somebody somewhere can consume this sort of thing as a, like a recreational thing. I, I just wouldn't recommend it. I don't think it's, uh, it's beneficial. I don't think the pros and cons are there. Some people, you know, they, they'll swear by it. And I think we have to be honest that there's a lot of things that we probably over consume that can be viewed as a drug drugs, food, caffeine, so on and so forth. Those things have a chemical change on your brain. Caffeine definitely is a tool that many people work to be more productive, to be more focused. I'm, I mean, I'm sipping some right now, a little yerba mate tea. So I think we have to be honest about these things. And instead of demonizing the actual substance of THC, I think it's a fair critique to talk about the surrounding culture and the cons of it and not just the actual plant. Because at the end of the day, it is just a plant that can be a gummy to the point where you're not, into, like I, I wasn't high on this, to be clear. Like I wasn't high. I just, my body was just relaxed and I didn't have any pain. 
This stuff is expensive, man. This, this little thing of however many servings, it's like 50, 20 pieces for like 40 bucks. I just don't think it's I just don't think it's worth it, in my opinion. Now, I also ain't messing with o, uh, opio, opioids. I'm, I also don't think of taking a bunch of uh, Advil is great on your kidneys, right? And I've had elevated kid, kidney enzymes and stuff like that. So that's uh, that's another thing is like I have to watch out for. So it, it, the, that's my situation. Now, here's what the doctor said. Just came from the doctor today, got my knee looked at. I thought he was going to drain it because there's some fluid on it. Anybody that's done a drainage of the knee is brutal, okay? <laughs> so I thought I was going to get another one. Done. I had done one in August and I got a cortisone shot and which, which is a steroid shot in the knee. Oh, I did steroids too. Uh, <laughs> he looked at my knee. He said, listen, that th there's nothing we can do right now. Like I could drain it, but there's not enough fluid in there. I could give you an injection, but I'd rather you get an MRI so we could see if it's your meniscus. And then we can know if you need another surgery. I was like, here's the macro thing and why I believe this is all for good outside of the cannabis thing. I love playing basketball. That was my thing, but I'm at a spot honestly, where I have peace with not needing to continue playing basketball, even if I never play again. And I think God used this situation, me getting injured again, to, I guess, remove a dependency from something in my life that I enjoy recreationally. But going out and working out six days a week and two of those days, I'm burning a thousand calories, 1500 calories from playing basketball and being jacked up the day after wasn't good. And so even though I'm injured, believe it or not, I'm actually burning more calories, getting better workouts and losing more weight post injury. So think about that for so why? Cause I learned to love the elliptical and that's something that I need to learn to contentment in, learn to just enjoy whatever I can do. Fitness, there's, there's no wear and tear on my knee. I want to be playing with my kids as long as I can. Right. And so I, you know, doing the elliptical, feeling great. And now my week, my workouts are way more consistent. There's less like heavy recovery after basketball days. And overall, I think, uh, I think it's all worked for good. Those are my experiences, experiences with it. Is it possible? Sure. Generally speaking, I think most folks are probably, uh, abusing cannabis, uh, and most, and most of us, if we're honest, probably are abusing other things too, that we consume sugar. Cause that's definitely a big one for me. Other folks are probably abusing caffeine, abusing pills that you can have prescribed. I know a lot of folks that have taken Adderall over the years. So there's so many different abuses. And I think it's bizarre based on like some of our pathology with the war on drugs of how much we've demonized this plant. And I think there is absolutely medicinal benefits from it. And I do think if you're consuming it in a very, very small dose, I guess you can take it without being completely blissed and high out of your mind. But if we're frank, most people aren't doing it. If you guys want to hear my original is smoking weed a sin video, I'll link it up here. And if you want to hear about a time where Hollywood went to defend the faith and politically incorrect views of Chris Pratt, you can check this out here and I will see you over there. Peace.